Uh, hi, uh, Chris Chinock here for Display Central. I'm at SID 2013 with uh, Giovanni uh, Mancini, uh, Director of Product uh, Management, I believe, at, uh, at E-Inc. And we're going to actually talk about a several several products that you're introducing here at the show. And in fact, let's start with the, the Mobius product, which is a, a joint partnership uh, with Sony. So show us about this. So uh, what we announced is the uh, Mobius display. What Mobius is, is a flexible, uh, lightweight, and rugged display. As you can see here, I have a 13.3-inch panel that is extremely light, and I can curve it. Yes. Now, What's great about this is not the fact that it actually flexes, but the flexibility makes the, makes the display light and rugged. So I could actually drop this display on the floor and nothing really happens. In terms of our product capability, this enables a, um, a product that Sony brought to market and announced last week as well right. called a digital uh, paper prototype. What I have here is an A4 form factor reading device that I can load uh, documents, books on it, and it makes it extremely light. Ex you know, extremely, extremely portable, so I can think of this more as a virtual printer. Okay. So uh, now, now, of course, you, you you lose the flexibility when you put it into this kind of a package. But as we discussed earlier, flexibility is really much more about lightness and and ruggedness as opposed to flexibility. Exactly. When people when people talk about flexibility, when we, in talking to the customers, what they really want a flexibility for is not to be able to bend the display, but really they wanted a light and rugged display, and that's what what we have over here. So, yes, and it is very light and rugged. I checked it out before. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So this display actually weighs about 63 grams, okay. and the entire product weighs uh, about 350 grams. Wow. So it's pretty light. Yeah. So uh, what I have here is a, a product where I've loaded up a control theory book, and you know, in reading it, I might want to annot make annotations to it, so I, I have the full annotation capability where if I get out of erase mode, yes. it will actually work. So I can make annotations as to what I think are imp in important parts. And the device also has full touch capability where I can basically use my hand to, to turn the page the same way with a normal device. And it remembers all my annotations. So when I go back, so exactly like a book, I actually have the annotation still, yeah. still present on the display. As, as you can, you can kind of see this in this, uh, an, whoop, I'm sorry, in this annotation here. Um, th this stuff is, it actually works with a very nice little uh, uh, pen stylus. Uh, we played with it before and you can, you can uh, do some nice swipe erasing with this. You can save, you can annotate. Uh, so it's actually a nice little uh, handy little, uh, little device. It is a great device. We've had a lot of interest from people coming through our booth uh, this week, and Sony showed, showcased this at our education trade show uh, last week, and they had a tremendous amount of interest as well. Now, now, now you did tell me uh, previously that Sony plans to prototype this in, uh, in a university or two with the idea that they'll actually fully commercialize this by the end of the year, correct? Right. So Sony is actually launching a pilot program with three universities in Japan, and they're planning to use this in the classroom as part of the curriculum in the second half of this year, okay. and they will, they will uh, plan on commercializing the product by the end of this year. Okay, excellent. Right. excellent. Good. Okay. okay. Let's, let's move on to the, ne the, uh, the next product here that you're introducing. I, I guess we can talk about the, uh, um, this, uh, this is the this, uh, Spectra. So what we, have, what we have here is a product that we announced yesterday. It's our Spectra product. It's intended for electronic shelf tags, basically replace uh, the price tags that you have in your store. What's great about Spectra on the technical side is that we've been able to encapsulate three pigments, uh, three different color pigments, white, black, and red, and that we're able to control those pigments independently. So what that allows us to do is we're able to generate vibrant red um, in the electronic shelf tags that um, our retail consumers would be using. So, you know, from... Uh, that gives basically the, uh, the, the retailer three, different, three distinct advantages. One is they could use that color as part of their branding exercise. Red is a popular color amongst commercial brands. Secondly, it can use the color to highlight sales uh, that you typically have in a store, so you actually want to bring a customer's attention to a particular sale device. Uh, and also, you can use the, the uh, color to bring attention to information. So you might have different types of information that you, you want to communicate to the customer in the store, and our eyes will naturally gravitate to red. So, and, it, and, and I noticed you have your, the graphic here, and it shows this is kind of based on the, the Cypix technology, which you acquired, what was it, about a year ago or so, a year and a half ago? Yes, it's based on the Cypix technology we acquired about, uh, uh, about a year ago. So kind of like, you know, it's microcup based, and, the, um, and they were working on this technology uh, at that time. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, this is kind of clever, three different particles that move around in this, in this microcup. Uh, to uh, do whatever you want. Now, the colors, uh, it, they, they are red. They're not really, f uh, I wouldn't call them fully saturated red, right. but, but they're definitely noticeable red. So, uh, uh, you know, a nice distinguishing feature. Right. And 
the, the red that you see is not a subdued red because we have a color filter on it. The red that you see is really the red of the pigment that's underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. And you said that your customers actually preferred this color pigment for, for some reason instead of a more fire engine red, for example. Right. They, they preferred that red because they felt that that was the red that you, you tend to see more in, in brands and in commercial displays. I see. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's, let's talk about the, uh, the Aurora. Second product, the second product we announced yesterday is Aurora. Now, what Aurora is, is basically the same, uh, same shelf tack technology that we had before, mm -hmm. but what's different about Aurora is that Aurora can actually go into the freezer. So Aurora is rated all the way down to minus 25 degrees C. So basically, you now have a shelf tag solution from the freezer to the retail shelf, all the way to your promotional aisle using our products. And before it went down to zero C, is that correct? So the, the standard electronic shelf tag that we had had a temperature range of zero C to 50 degrees C. So that's a significant expansion then, yeah. How about on the higher end, can Aurora still go to, to 50C at the high end? Um, Aurora could actually go slightly higher on the high end, down all the way up to 60 degrees C. Oh, wow. Quite an expansion then. That's great. Uh, and finally, the, the, the last thing we talked about uh, it was some of your, your public signage. Uh, you were at DSC a few months ago where you showed a, a, a bunch of uh, actually very interesting uh, public signage, and, and you're showing some of that here. Uh, one is based on a TFT back, back plane, um, and the other is based on segmented displays that look actually very sharp and crisp. Uh, so tell us kind of what, what your thinking is in the, in the signage market at this point. So in the signage market, we're actually you know, focusing on three different areas. One is large area signage where you want full active matrix. And then that's where we have, it's, it's, it's like TFT based, but it's not a TFT, where the pixels are actually directly from the printed circuit board, where our FPL is directly laminated on the printed circuit board. And that we're working in a partnership with a company called GDS, which is a signage company out of Northern Italy. And um, you know, they focus on, on billboard signs. And so we, we're looking at kind of more, you know, the large area signs where we're re replacing large paper billboards with something of that nature. Okay. The, the second sign that you referred to, which is kind of the sharp edges, yeah. is really a segmented sign. And that's really targeted at a customer that is more trying to provide information. Uh, typically, this, the type of signs that you would find in a bus, a bus shelter uh, or a train station. Um, so, you know, there you want kind of just, you know, very simple, you know, low, um, um, easy performing type of technology and that's kind of the, the segmented uh, sign that we have there. And the third one is more kind of informational signs that you'll typically find maybe in a retail store or in a conference room mm -hmm. where uh, you want kind of something of the order of maybe 10 to 11 inches, maybe 12 inches uh, type of sign and that, you know, our, because our technology is low power yeah. and it doesn't require any power to actually hold the image, you, you know, you would use this as providing information outside of a conference room or possibly um, on a, a retail shelf. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. and, and finally, the last thing you also showed was some, some color displays. And what I thought was very in interesting and kind of unique about your approach here was um, you said the color saturation can be, is basically coupled to the pixel size. Right. The bigger the pixel, the more color saturation you can right. get. And so you kind of designed and optimized several different displays with optimized different viewing distances and obviously different color uh, size pixels. Um, exactly. So, you know, what, what we found in our color research is that the, you know, the, the, um, the, the color saturation that you see is a direct, directly related to how much light travels through that color or the size of that pixel. As we make that pixel bigger, uh, the, that color tends to become brighter and brighter. Um, so if, if you think about this for a signage application where you're typically standing further away, we can now make our pixels much larger, therefore making our colors much more saturated. And because we're dealing with, with, with signage applications, you know, you're not really up close. So we, we tend to optimize the size of the pixel for the viewing distance of that particular sign so that the pixels disappear, but you get the richness of the color. Makes a lot of sense for, for public signage, not so much for e-readers right. because you're too close, but yeah, great, great idea. Yeah. Excellent work. Well, thank you, Giovanni. This is uh, Chris Chinock for Display Central.